Well, I've tracked down the fine folks from Hindenburg Systems, the people who make Hindenburg Journalist, which is the application I use to create the, uh, the audio podcast. It's a digital audio workstation. And I'd like to introduce you to Chris Matis and uh, Preben Fries. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> now, for those listening only, you might notice I've got these guys uh, sitting. That's because they're about eight feet taller than I am. And I told them my arm would get tired, so we're going we're gonna to make life easy and let them sit for the interview. Um, but I wanted to start with the, the question of, uh, you've got several different audio applications. I'm using Hindenburg Journalist, mm -hmm. but you've got higher level applications. I'd be curious to find out what these products are for the audience and, and where you see them placed in the market. Sure. So basically, we differentiate between licensing for individuals and licensing for corporations and education institutions. So for an individual podcaster who just works with uh, alone or maybe with their husband, um, you uh, can buy a journalist, which is like an entry-level version, which has a single track recording and multi-track editing and most of the features you'd need for a basic podcast. And then for Journalist Pro, you get into some of the more advanced features. You have multi-track recording, you have noise reduction tools, you have equalization tools. Um, you have access to recording, for example, calls from uh, Hangouts or Skype and stuff like that. So, you know. So, you mentioned, you mentioned equalization. I have noticed, though, when I drag in an audio recording, it does kind of an auto leveling on the fly, which is right. really nice. For those who listened to the show last week, I was playing recordings from an application called Seeing, uh, Seeing AI from Microsoft, and one of them was this loud buzzing, and it was recorded. It was super high level, and I dropped it in, and I watched it just shrink down to like a tenth of what it was, and it was a beautiful thing. I mean, I always normalize afterwards, but you do a lot of that on the fly, right? Even in Hindenburg Journalist. Yeah. So, so basically, what Hindenburg, one of the advantages of Hindenburg for a podcaster is that we've made it for podcasting and radio from scratch, which means we know what your desired output is going to be, and we know that you need to have balanced uh, audio inside the system. So what we've done is we've based the whole system on a new and technical term called loudness, which is a way of measuring uh, the volume, the perceived volume of audio, as opposed to looking at the peaks. Right, now I do loudness uh, through Auphonic Leveler after the fact. Are you uh, saying I don't really need to do that? I might be saying that, yes. <laughs> in Journalist, I thought that was one of the features of Pro. Well, you can do it in an export to a podcast destination. Then we have a built-in uh, export uh, loudness normalization at minus 16. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what I'm normal. I'm uh, doing it too. Doing. So that's pretty be, good. As you should be. I know. I uh, I obey the rules, of yes. course. So now, um, when I first got this, I was uh, really, really pleased with the product. I found that there were a, a few little things where I was like, oh, if it just did it a little bit like this. And I wrote to you guys, and immediately someone named Hindi wrote back right. and said, oh, hey, that's cool. I'll put it in. Here's a download right now uh, with the feature in it. We'll put it in the next feature. I was in. Is that? Are you Hind? Are you Hindi? No, I'm not Hindi. Hindi is just our nickname for the for the application. Uh, so, but I'm I'm the lead programmer, so I'm, I can usually do some magic. Oh, I have I definitely have you to th to thank, Brevin, because I I was just like, oh my gosh, he did it immediately just for me, and then put it as a future uh, uh, product update, and that was fantastic. Yeah, well, it probably something that we needed to do anyway. So, <laughs> well, still, that's uh, oh, no. <laughs> it was a brilliant idea that you brought to our table, and we had to see your magnificence <laughs> and accept it. Yeah. Yes, Chris is the CEO and, uh, and Preben is the, uh, is the CTO, right? That's why we hired him. <laughs> well, that sounds great. Now, a lot of my listeners have asked why on earth anyone would name a product after a, an airship that blew up. Who wants to take that one? Go ahead. Well, the story is that the Hindenburg was this infamous blimp that blew up at, at Lakehurst in 1937. And what actually has the relevance for journalists is that uh, Herbert Morrison was capturing the explosion live or not live, he was actually recording it to discs but this was the first in the field record, record which was then broadcast coast to coast the day after. Oh wow, so you really did name it after Radio. A recording of something that was blown up, but the radio event? Yes, it, for, for radio it's a historical event, it's the first real coast to coast live broadcast in the sense for the listener from the field really well and that was in 1937 right yeah. and, and the the kind of portable recorder he had w was 80 pounds so you said disc uh, you aren't talking uh, bits and bytes are you 
No, I was talking about lacquer discs. They were cu cut the grooves like an, um, an LP record. Oh, wow, and that was in the field in 1937. Now, you were telling Steve another anecdote before we started, and I don't know what it is, so I don't know how to set you up for it. Oh, uh, I think it's I think it's a continuation of the same one. I think we got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is pretty cool. So, uh, Hindenburg Journalist costs how much? Um, 95 bucks is a one-time fee, and that'll get you everything up to version 1.99. And at some point, hopefully sooner than later, we'll be releasing a version 2.0 which will have a lot of bells and whistles worth upgrading for. Oh, so I should put in my feature request now, because yes. uh, you have nothing better to do, Previn, right? Exactly. <laughs> I've got a lot to do. <laughs> <laughs> a big list. So, But that is an affordable price. I, I bought it, I don't know, three years ago maybe, and uh, I, I haven't had to pay any more. So if there was an upgrade fee to the next version, I would think that would certainly be reasonable. I mean, I've, right. I've absolutely got my value out of it and really, really enjoy using the product. Good to hear it. Good to hear it, yes. <laughs> and then if someone wants to look at the next level up, how much is Hindenburg Pro? So if you from scratch, it's 375 for the Pro. Um, of course, there's a discount for upgrading from journalists, and you know, but 375 is the. Any kind of discount for schools? Yes, uh, for universities and schools, we have uh, we give quite big discounts, and for individual students, full-time students, we also offer discounts. Okay, very cool. And where do, where would people find your products? Hindenburg.com. All right. Thank you very much. This was uh, fantastic, and, I, and a real honor to meet you guys because I love your product. Thank you very much for taking thank the time. You. Nice to meet you. Well, right after we finished recording, Previn just idly mentions that they have an iPhone app. So uh, why don't you tell us about it? Well, it's actually the first product that we released even before Journalist. So, so it's basically a very simple recorder. You have one big record button and it just starts recording. And we can see a wave, uh, not a waveform, but we can see the volume and whether it's uh, peaking and that sort of thing. And then a, a big number here, what's that? That's markers. So if, if I say something important, you can click that marker. And so is that a chapter mark? No, it'll, it'll just be a normal marker. So, But if you actually import it in a journalist, you'll be able to see that marker and convert it to a chapter marker if you liked. Ah, I see. So and so, what, keep going. So when you're done uh, recording, you can go to the edit mode and... You hit slide to pause. Oh, that's the waveform I'm looking at. You still can It should look familiar to you. And you can do all the same stuff. I'm talking for... Uh, tell the audio listeners what you're doing, too. He's dragging the edges of the waveform around. So, and should be able Keep to explaining there. Oh, okay. Be able to play back and you can... It's really hard to do from this angle. <laughs> Uh, so he's editing the waveform. Oh, you gotta, you're actually going to cut and clip? Oh, my gosh. It's actually an editor, too. Yes. And, of course, with undo. Shake to undo. He just did a, did a shake on it. So what is this product called? Uh, Hindenburg Field Recorder. Okay. And how much is it? $30. Very, very cool. Well, that's, uh, that's and, fantastic. I'm that's a light version, which do, does all the same tricks and stuff, but it can only record for one minute. Oh, okay, so you could give a chance to try it out. Yes, but, but there's more. Oh, there is? Yes. And yet, there's more. This is going to be the first two-hour on-the-floor interview. Because what he hasn't shown you is the really cool bit. You, you can send it directly to Hindenburg. You can send it as an email, upload it to FTP to SoundCloud. You can put it so that it's available in iTunes, or you can send it to the, any other application uh, that uh, handles audio. Oh, that's fantastic. And when you send it to Hindenburg via your Bluetooth, it's actually the session, you f you're not bouncing in the file, it's the session. So all your edits and your markers are exactly as you left them here. So you can carry on editing and start on your phone and move oh, on to that, your phone. Oh, I will definitely use that. That oh, looks fantastic. <laughs> they just cost me money, dang it. Yeah. Okay, we're going to cut this interview off then. <laughs>